This video is brought to you by GoFiber Hair Building Fibers. Pick up your free sample and get instant hair confidence. Start your transformation today. 114 men ending up with 10 times the normal plasma DHT levels for about two years without being put on any 5-AR inhibiting medication. Before I tell you the results of these placebo-controlled trials, let me also tell you that this video will help you better understand why it's not really clever or important to measure your plasma DHT levels prior to starting with any 5-AR inhibiting drug like finasteride or dutasteride just for the sake of tracking your DHT changes or DHT plasma levels that way. Hey, welcome back everybody, Matt here and you're watching my hair loss and hair transplant related channel where I like to educate guys on topics of hair transplant and hair loss. So if you're new, make sure you subscribe and also get my free ebook on www.mattdominance.com which is called Five Things I Wished I Had Known Before My Hair Transplant. Now let's come back to the topic of today's video. We know that DHT increases the prostate size and speeds up the male pattern hair loss progression if you are predisposed to it. We know that selective tissues like hair follicle tissue, prostatic tissue and other selective tissues in your body are being targeted by androgens. Especially they are known for having high concentrations of the DHT, dihydrotestosterone, as a result of the enzyme type 1 and type 2 5-alpha reductase being overly expressed in these selective tissues and kind of overly converting a lot of testosterone into a lot of DHT. We were told to limit the exposure of these selective tissues to the DHT by inhibiting the 5-alpha reductase enzyme type 1 and type 2 with medications like finasteride and dutasteride, brand names Propecia and Avodart. But what's going to happen if you increase the plasma DHT levels in men by as much as 10 times uh, with a transdermal DHT gel and you do it over a two-year period and you don't put these guys on any 5-AR inhibiting drug like finasteride or dutasteride. What's going to happen to their prostate and hair follicles? Will they get a lot of hair loss out of the sudden? Will their prostate size like start to increase rapidly? Let's take a look. 114 men have started to use 70 milligram transdermal DHT gel every single day for a period of two years and their DHT plasma levels increased in about 10 times by some guys a little bit less, but 10 times in some individuals. No adverse events, neither any benefits of DHT on prostate size were observed during a two year period. So here's what's important. The selective tissues with high DHT concentrations like prostate are not just a passive recipient of circulating testosterone and DHT, but rather have the ability to synthesize and metabolize these androgens. And that's why most of the time if you compare a plasma DHT levels and uh, tissue DHT levels of prostate or hair follicles, you'll find out that the results can differ in about 5% to tenfold, okay? In order to prove to you why the tissue DHT levels are gonna be almost always higher than the serum DHT levels and why it's gonna be uh, the same with the scalp DHT concentration, we're gonna be looking at this study which actually uh, measured the scalp DHT concentration with the biopsy. What we wanna know is uh, compare the scalp DHT levels prior to starting with finasteride and the serum DHT levels prior to starting with finasteride which is 1.36 nanomole per liter in comparison to 7.37 picomole per gram. And the picomole per gram, it's uh, the same as nanomole per liter. You can do the conversion. I did the conversion. It's the same. So we can clearly compare these values uh, face to face. So we have 1.36 uh, DHT concentration uh, in serum versus 7.37 uh, DHT concentration in the scalp. So we have like about five to six times a higher concentration of the DHT on the scalp. Okay. I'm sure this was a very small sample size. So if you are a guy with really aggressive hair loss, you probably have even tenfold uh, concentration of DHT in your hair follicles uh, as opposed to the serum DHT. Okay. So that's the point. That means that the plasma DHT could theoretically increase 
uh, almost to the same amount of concentration that is on your scalp and you still wouldn't feel like increased hair loss. Theoretically, as long as the DHT concentrations in, in, in the serum remains the same or lower as the DHT concentration on the scalp, you shouldn't notice any increased hair loss, theoretically, of course. All right, guys, I promise this is gonna be the very last study for this video where dihydrotestosterone is being referred to as a peripheral paracrine hormone. A paracrine hormone is a hormone which is only effective or has an impact in the vicinity of the gland secreting it. And thus, this study further suggests that DHT should be thought of as a hormone formed and acting primarily in target tissues. All right, guys, so what's the point of this video? What is something that you should take from this video? You're like, man, you just rambled on for so long. Like, you didn't teach me anything. The role of the DHT in the blood is not as important as we may think, and it should be tracked and measured within each selective tissue, okay? Like prostate or hair follicle or skin. If you want to successfully track your progress or DHT blocking progress, uh, track it on the scalp. Uh, it's gonna be probably pretty expensive. You will need to do a scalp biopsy regularly to track um, the DHT blocking on the scalp or the inhibition of the DHT or suppression, call it as you want. Uh, and even then, even if you manage to do it like 100%, uh, there's still going to be testosterone or any other androgen in your body, of course less potent than the DHT, but still these androgens like testosterone will be the, the second guy in a row waiting for the androgen receptor to bind, uh, bind with if the DHT is not going to be present. So even if you manage to block the DHT 100%, there's still going to be testosterone again and any other androgens uh, causing your hair loss and causing the miniaturization but this is of course uh, a topic for for entirely another video uh, so i hope you like this one i hope i was able to provide you with interesting insights uh, again and if you have any more questions make sure you write them down in the comments below and i will see you in the next video take care